Welcome back to my series on making a military rifle stock from scratch. The stock blank is finally shaped into a stock. It fits the action and the rest of the metal well. It's ready for finishing, but first I need to make the handguard. I'll be following much of the same processes that I used to make the stock, starting with the material selection, inlining, rough cutting, and then shaping. Before that, I'll take a look at the original handguard which is still attached to the action. There's a pair of spring clips that hold it onto the barrel. The wood on the handguard is relatively thin. I don't want to risk cracking it, so the proper way to remove a crack handguard is to unscrew the rear sight. That allows the handguard to slide forward down the tapered barrel until it could easily be pulled off. There it is. You can see how thin and fragile it is, especially at the rear where it goes over the receiver ring. There's the spring steel clips that hold it on. They're attached to the handguard by rivets. The cutout on this handguard is for the sight that this rifle came with, the Model 1902 sight. I started this rifle build with the same sight, but since I already have this one, I swapped to a Model 1901 sight. At first glance, they're about the same size, but it actually goes this way. Aligning the screw, it's much farther forward, so I won't be copying the cutout that's in the handguard now. In relation to this, the back will be filled in, and the front will have to be cut away. Turning back to the stock, in the wood selection video, I had cut out the handguard. This is just the size that I need, but when brainstorming how I was going to shape the handguard, I ran into an issue. This piece is just too small to hold in the vise and inlet using the router. I need something bigger. This is the off cut from when I cut out the stock blank. This will give me the extra size that I need to be able to easily hold the handguard in the vise. I think it originally went like this, which explains why it's cut at an angle. I want the grain to be straight, however, so I'll place the handguard blank parallel with the board. And mark the minimum length. Then I'll get out the ruler. Align it parallel. and then draw a line. I'll mark the waist with an X. So the handguard blank will end up looking like this, but I'll cut it out later on. For now, I'll just make this cut over on the table saw. I'll look over to align the mark to the blade, set the fence, and then I can make the cut. Back on the workbench, with the blank in the vise, you can see how it sticks up out of the vise quite a bit. 
more than enough room for the router fence to ride along. I'll draw a center line on it. Next, I'll be cutting the barrel channel on the underside of the handguard with the router. I'll measure the barrel at the front of the handguard, just behind the middle band. 0.775, just a hair larger than a three quarters bit. I'll step up to the next larger bit that I have, 7 eighths. And mark where the barrel is that size. then up to a 1 inch. But the large end of the barrel isn't quite that big. It's undersized at 0.975. I don't have any bits larger than 1 inch, but I'll measure the receiver anyway. It's 1.3 inches. Now to measure across the length how far away these points are. That's just under an inch but I'll mark it at one inch later so I can trim to length. That's four inches and 40 64ths, or four and five eighths. And from there forward is four inches, but I'll leave this end longer as well. I'm going to mark the blank backwards from how I just measured. So on the right, I'll go in an inch. From that mark, I'll measure in 4 and 5 eighths inches. And then 4 inches. But I'll leave this end long as well. I'll just double check with the handguard that these match up. And then I can label the bits that I'll be using. 1 inch, 7 eighths, and 3 quarters. Before I start with the router, I'll add support boards on either side to provide a more stable base. Then I can add the router. I'll adjust the fence so the bit is on the center line. Then I'll set the depth stop. These steps on the depth stop are in eighth inch increments, so I'll turn it three times to go three eighths deep. I'll go the full length of the handguard blank with the three quarters bit, then step up to the seven eighths, and then route just the very end with the one inch bit. I'll start routing.
There's the inletting with the three different size cuts. I don't need all this excess material anymore, so I'll measure and mark the thickness of the handguard at the rear. And again at the front. For the length, I'll add an extra half inch or so. Then connect these marks. I'll be cutting this out over on the bandsaw. There's the blank cut out. I'll continue on with the inletting, first marking guidelines for the barrel's taper. At the rear, I'll roughly mark out the diameter of the receiver. Then I can transfer it over to the vise. I'll add a block on the line that marks the front of the receiver. I can use that to align a chisel. I'll work it around, scoring the wood fibers. Then I can use a wider chisel across the grain to remove some of the waste. I'm not going to bring this area to its final shape just yet. I'm only removing excess material so that I can keep this area defined and separate from the rest of the inletting. Now that there's a greater step down here, I'll be working right up to the rounded cut left over by the larger router bit. I'll use the gouge to create the barrel taper. I'll be slowly moving down the handguard, removing less material as I get closer to the front end. I'll be test fitting by sliding the handguard rearwards on the barrel. I'll move the middle band forward and out of the way. Then I can test fit. It's tight right there, and past that it pulls away. So that indicates that the taper needs to be enlarged. If I force it on, I can just make out the spots at which the wood fibers are being compressed. Along the edges at the rear. I'll move back to the vise, and I'll remove material by sanding the inlining smooth. I'm testing a scrap piece to see how tight it fits. This will be used to sand only the very rear. I have a feeling that the handguard is very close to fitting, which is why I'm proceeding to sand rather than remove more material with the gouge. I'll use a smaller piece to sand the middle. and then an 
even smaller piece to sand the front end. I'll test the fit again. The rear is up against the receiver and the sides are up against the stock. It will need to be slid back some more to right about there. But with it up against the receiver, I can use that as a guide to trace around. The part that goes over the receiver is very thin, only about an eighth of an inch thick. So I need to be very careful to leave as much material as possible. Test fitting. It looks too narrow. I'll concentrate on the sides. The sides look good now. I'll trace around the receiver with a wider pencil. That shows the areas that need to be removed. It's fitting over the receiver now, but if I try to lay it flat, it won't go down all the way. It needs to be relieved in the middle here. I'll add lipstick to the barrel to show where it's touching. I'll press on the handguard again. and it shows the spots preventing it from fitting all the way, mostly along the sides here. I'll relieve those areas. Then I can check the fit again. It's still not fitting down all the way, as you can see by the gap between it and the stock. So I have some more work to do. I'll remove a small amount of material, both with the gouge and the sandpaper, checking often as I go.
vanguard is fitting well now. You can see it's flush to the stock. I'll remove the lipstick from the barrel before it creates an even bigger mess. Now that the handguard inletting is done and it's positioned on the action, I can trim the ends. I'll mark the front at the middle band, and I'll mark the rear at the chamber opening. I'll double check that they're in the correct spots. And since I need a nice square cut, I'll cut these over on the table saw. I have it on the crosscut sled, and I'll start by cutting away from the lines. The reason for this is that I'll be testing the fit of it on the action, creeping up on it to being flush at both ends by shaving only a small amount of material from each end. There's the fit. The front is flush. The rear is slightly past flush, but that's how the original handguard is. Moving on, the top is cut to dimension. Now I'll cut along the sides. Marking them is easy. I'll just run the pencil along the stock on the underside of the handguard. There's the cut lines. I'll cut them out over on the bandsaw. There's the handguard. It fits right on there, and it's slightly wider than the stock, enough to bring to size with the spoke shave later on. But first, I need to attach it to the barrel. I'll be replicating these clips on the underside of the original handguard. I'll mark their location. The clips aren't just attached to the underside of the handguard, they're inlet slightly, as you can see here. That way the wood sits flush to the barrel, not only to the clips. I bent this clip up quickly to demonstrate how it will look. It'll need to sit down into the wood, so I'll remove a strip here.
With the handguard and the vise, I'll draw guidelines on either side. I'll use a narrow chisel to score on the lines that I just drew before I remove the waste from the middle. I'll cut out the clips from this piece of sheet metal. I'll measure the width and mark it down. Then I'll cut them out. I'll file down the width so they match and remove the burrs. Now I'm going to mark the holes for the rivets. There's really no way to measure how far apart they are since they're on an arc. I can only measure in a straight line, and this is called the cord of a circle. I can take the barrel diameter at this point and use it to calculate the arc length, which works out to be slightly larger than the cord. I'll measure the front clip, and then I'll mark the clips before I drill them out. With the holes drilled and deburred, I'm looking to how I'm going to attach the rivets. I made this tool that has a countersink in it. That matches the head on this small screw. It fits in there. Like that. I'll sandwich the clips between the two to create a countersink, like on this test piece. This will be for the head of the rivet to have a better hold than if this was not here. The screw I'm using to form is a tight fit because when it's countersunk, it'll enlarge the hole slightly. I'll get it in there and then move to the press and give it a squeeze. I have another use for the extra crack barrel that came with the parts that I bought. I can use it to bend the clips. I'll mark out their locations.
Here's what the holes on the clips look like after the press. To bend them, I won't bend it directly on the marks that I made. I'll move forward to where the barrel is just a bit thinner and bend them there. This thin steel bends quite easily by hand. And then once they're bent, I'll slide them back so it'll be a tight fit on the barrel at the marks. From there, I'll trim the ends and fine tune the fit. I'll place the handguard in its approximate location, making sure the clips fit within the release that I cut earlier. And I'll press it down in order to transfer the hole locations. They're very hard to make out on camera, but I can just see the faint outline of the holes by eye. I'll mark the centers with a sharpie. Then I'll center punch the holes to give the drill bit a starting point. Looking at the original handguard, the holes are approximately 45 degrees to the bottom, so that's how I'll need to set it up in the drill press. There's the V-block that I made. The shims at the front are due to the taper on the handguard. I'll drill them out. I'll hammer in a countersink to fit the clips instead of drilling it. I'd like to rivet the clips on now, but I can't with all this extra wood. I could fully shape the handguard with the outside rounded off to match the original. But since I'll be hammering the ends of the rivets, I want as much meat on the handguard as possible so that it doesn't crack. What I'll do is to just take off this edge. I'll start by transferring the outline of the original handguard onto the new one. I can use the barrel to help align them. I'll mark out a 45 degree line, just touching the outline that I just drew. I added guidelines to the top and the sides, and I'll use them to plane down the edges.
there's the edges planed down. Next, I'll make the rivets over on the lathe. I'll be machining them from brass because I'm concerned that peening the rivets might split the thin handguard. This is actually an old broken cleaning rod that's just the right diameter for the head of the rivet. There's the rivets machined out. Before I attach them, I'll quickly blue the clips to prevent them from rusting. Just a few dips in the cold blue will provide enough protection. Here's the clips and the rivets. The rivets I trimmed to length and annealed them using the torch. I'll assemble everything together. I'm using the pipe vise in order to hold the barrel securely. Then I can add the handguard and slide it just forward of its position. I'll place a block under the barrel for support. What I'm going to be doing here is to use the barrel as a backing bar for the rivet as I mushroom the end of it. With the ends of the rivets peened, the clips are permanently attached. The head of the rivets on the inside don't look too much different, but they are concave slightly from being hit against a barrel. One downside to making the clips from standard sheet metal instead of spring steel is that they will deform easily. This one's spread out, but I can squeeze it back together so it has a good hold on the barrel. Now to shape the handguard. 
The best way to do that is to have it on the rifle. In order to do that, I need to cut small reliefs in the stock for the clips. I'll mark their locations. Then I can remove the action from the stock. I'll chisel out the reliefs for the clips in the stock in the same way that I did for the handguard. The exception is that I'll only go down far enough to fit the ends of the clips. I'll test fit the handguard to make sure that it sits flush against the top of the stock. Some wiggle room ensures that I can get the handguard into the right position. Since the barrel will essentially be holding the handguard, I'll slide it on and into position. and then add the action to the stock, making sure everything is fully seated. To shape the handguard, I'll add a support to the front end. The support makes the middle section solid to begin shaping. With how I had removed the corners of the handguard here, the middle of this flat is at its final dimension, so I don't want to touch this line. Not that I would want to anyway, with the rivets here. I'll shape the bottom and the areas in between the rivets with the spoke shave. I'm shaping the handguard before cutting the hole for the rear sight, because the front and the back are on the same plane, so it's easier to shape them as one surface, rather than trying to get two surfaces aligned. In order to smooth out the handguard, I'll file down the rivets flush.
Then I can use the spoke shave just in line with the rivets for a very light finishing pass. I'll check along the handguard with the contour gauge. I'm looking for a semicircle that's even on both sides. And this is looking very good. With our rule, I'll also check that it's straight. Which it does look to be. Now I'm going to shape the front of the handguard to match the original. I'll mark where it starts to taper down and start shaping. Now it's time to sand the handguard in order to clean up any unevenness left over from the spoke shave and the areas around the rivets. I'll start with the sandpaper on a block, and then after that I'll pull it across the curved surface. With the handguard fully shaped, there is one thing missing, the hole for the rear sight. To mark it out, I'll draw on a centerline freehand. And then I'll take the original handguard and measure the location of the cutout in it, just at the front. and then mark it down. Using the site the original handguard was cut for, I'll align it to the mark. This will allow me to mark out the screw holes. And then I'll use them to align the sight that goes to this rifle and handguard. And then I'll trace around it. To cut it out, I need to remove the handguard. To support the handguard and the vise, I'm adding a pipe so that it doesn't get crushed. And then I'll gently tighten it down. Before cutting, I'll drill one small hole in the corner.
I'll cut out the hole for the sight with the scoping saw. I'll thread the blade through the hole, tighten it down, and add some tension. Then I can start cutting. There's the cut, aligning the holes to the rear sight. I didn't venture outside of the sight's footprint at all. But to cut the remaining material, I really don't have any better way of aligning the handguard in the barrel to be able to check the fit as I go. So I'll have to cut it out with these together like this, and I'll make sure that I'm very careful with the chisels. The rear sight is a nice fit, but I'm not finished with it just yet. This lever at the front is touching the wood, it needs room to move, and at the back there needs to be a small chamfer.
I'll check that the rear sight functions and is able to be adjusted in all ways without interference from the handguard, especially the windage, which pivots the whole sight side to side. There's the completed handguard. There are still a few small finishing steps to do, such as sanding the front taper and perhaps putting a small chamfer on at the back, but that will be covered later. The handguard, being much smaller than the whole stock, may seem like a quick and easy thing to make, but the reality is that each of the processes that I went through to make the stock, the material selection, inlining, fitting, and shaping, were also needed to make the handguard. And that's why this has been the longest video to date. All of that was covered in just this one video. But with the handguard done, and the stock done, I can begin the finishing process. Stay tuned for that video in the future. Thanks for watching.